Here's one I wrote called Keep On Playing. A lot of parts in the banjo. It made me realize that the banjo is really sort of an inefficient machine. And I think the, the gears started turning back in the early 80s. And well, how about a, a banjo head that screws on like the cap of a jar? A totally different kind of banjo rather than trying to copy the banjos that, that had, had been around for years. Well, here, here we are in the neck fill shop where we're storing wood and letting it dry. I've got walnut, maple, mahogany, and rosewood that we use for various purposes, mostly building necks and, uh, and uh, tone rings. I started playing banjo when I was 17, and I reached a point where I became a tinkerer and a builder. I built my first traditional banjo back in the early 1980s. The main difference between this and a traditional banjo, uh, it's not only aesthetics, but it's mechanical. This is a traditional banjo that has traditional drum hardware, and this has been around for probably 150 years. I'm trying to simplify the design to keep everyone's banjo more tunable and more ready to play. And this is the main uh, invention that really sets Neckville's banjos apart from, from the others. Um, there's really only two kinds of banjos in the world. There's Neckville, Gila Mounts, and then there's traditional banjos. So the design is pretty simple. It's uh, the head goes in. Think of this as a cap of a jar. And then if we want to screw this, this on, we have to have something to screw it onto. This would be considered the threaded uh, lip of the jar that screws in. And we're going to put something in between there, the tone ring. Now this is a metal and wood tone ring system with a Teflon strip. And we pop that in place. The retaining ring is threaded. That screws in. And uh, we turn that, get that started. And then once that gets started, And we have wrenches like this too to tighten it up with. I don't have to tighten each individual hook and nut. I have one mechanism that tightens the whole, the whole banjo at once. So if I had all the parts in front of me, I think I could probably put one of these together in just a few minutes. The standard design does require a lot more time uh, to, to get all the the nuts and hooks equally tight. You don't hear the hardware, you just hear the part that was made to make the sound. And the tone that comes out is a pure sound, it's less metallic, uh, edgy sound, it's fuller. get the fingerboard off here and here's what it looks like after it's finished we've sold banjos to the Dixie Chicks uh, Keith Urban some major country bands when, when I delivered the banjo to the Dixie Chicks I was up on stage and uh, delivering the banjo to Emily and they asked me to play it through the mic as the sound man was setting up the stage and I heard him say Neckville I love you because it was so easy for him to EQ the banjo and get it sounding right over that big auditorium sound system. The, the banjo has gotten um, stereotyped and pigeonholed, and so now the sound of a banjo is often cast off as, well, that's hillbilly music. But in the hands of a good artist, the banjo can really transform your emotions. This is an armrest, 
and I will buff one of these out. I love the creative process because I'm not expected to follow the, the mold of previous builders. I've been the lone ranger in the field of banjo design. The neck connection on the neck fill gives the player more choices of, of where his action should be. In other words, that's how the distance of the strings off the fingerboard. Loosen this uh, heel and notice how it slipped forward and then tighten it back up. And then you see that the strings have some distance away from the fingerboard. And I love all kinds of music, but I certainly like seeing the banjo in new environments. And so my goal is to see the banjo incorporated into ethnic musics of uh, different cultures. We see the banjo being used in highly composed music played by orchestras. I, I love seeing the banjo as it's growing and changing. <laughs> Something like that. Minnesota Original is made possible by the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the Citizens of Minnesota.